Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, a storm is brewing on the Temple Mount. Ever since I started my channel, if you've been following my channel, I have stated one of the biggest reasons I believe we are very close to the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ and the commencement of Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period, is I am watching God's prophetic timepiece, which is the nation of Israel. If you, know, if you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic timeline, you watch his timepiece, the nation of Israel. Israel as the hour hand, Jerusalem as the minute hand, the Temple Mount as the second hand. Right now, if you look at what's happening with Israel, if you look what's happening with Jerusalem, if you look what's happening with the Temple Mount, you will see we are on the verge of a dispensational change. Again, right now we're in the dispensation of grace, the church age, but God is about to put his full attention back to the nation of Israel for Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period. So let's jump right into it. We know that Benjamin Netanyahu is prime minister again of Israel after winning the last election. And we know that recently uh, the new government of Israel has been sworn in. And we've been talking about for a while this new government uh, that if Benjamin Netanyahu were to become prime minister again and this new government was going to be formed, if you look at who's in his government right now and you look at what's going on, we've been talking about how what we see happening right now with Netanyahu being re-elected prime minister and this new government that's just been sworn in, how this actually is pushing us closer to war against the nation of Israel, but ultimately this is pushing us um, closer to the fulfillment of certain biblical prophecies, including Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the eventual uh, covenant with death, like we see in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, but also... This new government is going to play a huge role in paving the way for not only the coming war against Israel, and from that war, uh, the future Antichrist will confirm the covenant with many. And part of the confirming the covenant with the many, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, I believe will be allowing them to rebuild the third temple. But this current government that's just been sworn in, you can see very clearly that part of their mission is going to be paving the way, preparing the way for this coming third temple. But anything involving Israel, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount, again, I pay very close attention to. Uh, I'm seeing all sorts of articles and news coming out right now about what's going on, especially involving the Temple Mount. Here's recently one I just came across from JNS. PA referring to the Palestinian Authority. Changes to the status quo on Temple Mount would be declaration of war. The Palestinian Authority said on Monday, just yesterday, that changes by Israel... To the, to the status quo at the Temple Mount, such as permitting Jewish prayer, there would be a declaration of war with serious consequences for everyone. Another one just in from JNS. Defying threats, Ben Gavir visits Temple Mount without incident. Now, we saw the threats from Hamas, Hezbollah, and the other enemies of Israel that if Ben Gavir visited the Temple Mount, that there would be severe consequences, that it would be a declaration of war. Now, Ben Gavir just recently visited the Temple Mount. Now, there was no major incidents when he visited, but we see the clear threats from Hezbollah, Hamas, and the enemies of Israel right now for a retaliation. Check this one just in from the Times of Israel. Jordan accuses Ben Gavir of storming al Aska by visiting Temple Mount. So just by him visiting the Temple Mount, now they warned him not to do it. A lot of, you know, these, these groups and countries said, don't do it. But Ben Gavir visited the Temple Mount, and now Jordan is accusing Ben Gavir of storming Al-Aqsa Al -Aqsa by visiting the Temple Mount. You got to see this one, folks. This is just in from the Jerusalem Post. PA, Palestinian Authority, accuses Israel of trying to build a new temple on Temple Mount. Hmm, well, that's interesting because we know according to Scripture... 
Uh, there will be a third temple during uh, that will be built. It has to be built by the midpoint, the three and a half year mark of the seven year tribulation period, because we know, according to scripture, that's when the Antichrist will walk into this newly rebuilt temple and declare himself as God in the abomination of desolation. And we know there will be a physical rebuilt temple, a third temple, because we see in Revelation chapter 11, literally, we see an angel giving a rod uh, to measure this physical temple. And then this just in from Haaretz, Hezbollah's Nezrala says new, new Israeli government can lead region, uh, lead to regional war. Like I said, folks, Benjamin Netanyahu being reelected in this new Israeli government that was just formed is pushing us closer to war. And eventually from that war, again, the Antichrist, when he does come onto the world scene after the rapture of the church, he's going to make order out of chaos. He's going to confirm the covenant with Israel and its surrounding enemies. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, including, again, I believe, the rebuilding of this future third temple. But folks, listen to this. Part of the article here says, Far-right National Secretary Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir, uh, his visit to the Temple Mount will lead to an explosion in the entire region. That's what Hezbollah's leader just said. Again, Ben-Gavir's visit to the Temple Mount will lead to an explosion in the entire region, said Hezbollah chief Nezrallah on Tuesday, just today. Again, nothing happened when Gavar visited the Temple Mount. But we're seeing Hamas, Hezbollah, and even Jordan and the other surrounding and other surrounding enemies of Israel saying there's going to be a retaliation here. A storm is brewing on the Temple Mount, folks. Ben Gavir is ascent to the holy site, the holiest in the Jewish religion, and among the holiest for Muslims, drew international criticism. His visit, the first since he took office last week, came after he made statements on wanting to change the long-standing religious status quo at the holy site to allow Jews to pray there. On the eve of the election, he stated that he would demand that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu introduce equal rights for Jews on the Mount. Nezrallah also said this, the leader of Hezbollah, what happened today at the al Aska compound and the stance regarding the Palestinians of many Arab countries guarantee they are turning toward a dangerous direction. If the al Aska mosque and the holy sites are harmed, it will not destroy the it will not destroy the situation with Palestine alone, but in the entire region. Folks, just connect all the dots. A storm is brewing on the Temple Mount. Benjamin Netanyahu being reelected in this new Israeli government, and Ben Kavir Ben Kavir visiting the Temple Mount when Hezbollah, Hamas, Jordan, and many others said, "Don't do it because it will lead to a major escalation. It will lead to a, it'll be a declaration of war." Again, nothing happened today in regards to a retaliation, but we're seeing a very, very direct threat from the surrounding enemies of Israel for a declaration of war from this. So you need to keep your eyes on this. A storm is brewing on the Temple Mount. We see things heading to a war against Israel. We see the stage getting set up from this war for the eventual, eventual confirming of the covenant with many, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. We see eventually this third temple coming. Folks, Jesus is coming soon. If you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back one day very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. 
Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with them forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me and God bless you all.